have been looking at verses of Psalm 27 over the last couple of weeks. I so sense in here tonight that some people need the comfort, the rescue of the Lord. This Psalm 27 identifies the Lord in so many different ways. We heard he is our light, our salvation, our refuge, our stronghold. The Psalm writer whom I believe was David, asked that he may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So your face, Lord, I will seek. Psalm 27, verses 7 to 9 is where we concentrate. Verses 7 to 9 is where we concentrate this evening. Verse 7, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Sometimes we cry with tears. Sometimes we cry in our hearts. But the psalmist is crying out with his voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Verse 9, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You've been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. How strange a plea from him when in verse 6, we had heard last week and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. In his tent I will offer sacrifices and shouting of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. How does he move from that to here? O Lord, when I cry aloud, have mercy on me. Don't turn away from me. (laughs) Let me read from the Amplified Version, which everybody knows by now is my favorite. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Have mercy and be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face, inquire for, and require my presence as your vital need. I'm finished, really, at that point. Require my presence. as your vital need. Do we need food to eat to sustain our bodies? Yes. Do we need water to drink to quench thirst? Yes. Do we need sleep at night so that we can function in the daytime or in the daytime and function at night if you're a night worker? Yes. Yet they're not as vital as the requirement of the presence of the Lord. I carry on in that verse, my heart says to you, your face, your presence, Lord, will I seek. And I'll require it of necessity and on the authority of your word. Even in this lengthier version, it speaks about the authority, it speaks about the word of God that brings victory in our lives. Soft words, passionate words, nice words, are great, but do they have authority? Do they make a difference in our lives? When somebody pays me a compliment, it's nice. But the authority of the word is what brings victory and change in my life, nothing else, nothing else. Verse nine in the Amplified, hide not your face from me, turn not your servant away in anger, you you who have been my help, Cast me not off, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. So I'm going to speak in three different sections this evening. And the first section, I'm just breaking down particular words from each verse. Hear. It doesn't just mean, did you hear what I said? 
It means to hear intelligently. So there's a listening of what's being said and an understanding, often with implication of attention or understanding. The psalmist David is saying to God, hear, pay attention to me, understand me. He says here, my cry. The idea of accosting a person that you've met. So for instance, if Pastor Scott, I think he should just come up really and, and stand with here, here for me. Thank you. I could call out to him, hear my cry, and he could have attention. But th that word cry means more than that. Hear my cry. I'm clinging to him. I'm, I'm, I'm accosting him. Hear, I'm getting his attention. That's what it means. Thank you. He talks about, have mercy on me. It, it, it means to bend, to stoop in kindness to somebody who is inferior. David is asking the God of all creation, the Almighty One, bend in kindness to me, who is subservient to you. Have mercy on me, on what I need on my plight, stoop, if you will, in kindness to favor me. Answer, so again he's saying, hear my cry, hear my voice, have mercy on me and answer me. It means properly to heed, to pay attention, to respond even by extension, to begin to speak. Hear my cry, hear my desperation. Understand I'm crying out to you and begin to speak to me because I'm going to need to hear you back. It even has the connotation of to sing or to shout or testify or announce. So in, in those four words that I've picked out, you understand in verse 7 that David is crying out for the attention of an understanding, merciful God who will answer. Verse 8, when you said, and some of the different versions you read say, when I said, but the, the, the most ones that I've read, it says, when you said, so he's talking to God. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Seek to search out by any method. But it, there's a specific here. In worship or prayer. Ooh. There is David on his face, seeking the Lord, worshipping the Lord, praying to the Lord. But there's this act of worship as he's crying out, as he's seeking. See, for me, at the moment, I have this prayer shawl I keep talking about, and I cover myself with it, whether I lay flat out on the floor, whether I'm sitting on a sofa. When I cover myself with it, Everything else is cut off from me. I'm covered by it, and I begin to cocoon myself in a place where only he becomes prominent. Only his presence begins to seep into every part of my being. Seek, worship, worship, pray. It, it means to strive after to beg, beseech, desire, like that vital need. Seek my face, what's the face of God? His presence. Many of us seek his hands. Gimme, 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 gimme. 
What have you got for me? What can you do for me? David was known as a man after God's own heart. Why? Because he sought the face of God. He sought the presence of God. Nothing more. I just want to be with you. I want to dwell in your house forever. I want to see your face. He says, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will see. What is the heart? The center of everything. The center of me, David said. Everything I am seeks you, looks for your face. The very core of me is calling out to you. I want your face, Lord. I want to see you. Verse 9, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You've been my help. This word hide, uh, to hide by covering. Be absent. Conceal oneself. Keep secret. Reminds me of when Jesus was on the cross and said, why have you forsaken me? God hadn't moved anywhere. But God had covered himself from sin which Jesus had now taken upon himself on the cross. And Jesus felt the absence of his presence. It says, you have been my help. Do you know that have been means something? When I looked it up, you you exist. You be or you become my help. That his very existence is help. You exist to help me. You exist. You are. David is saying, you have consistently been my help. I know you. He says, don't forsake me. Uh, Forsake means to loosen or relinquish something that was yours. Leave, destitute. David is saying, don't leave me destitute. Don't forsake me. He says, because you are my salvation. The God of my salvation. Salvation means liberty and deliverance. Even prosperity means safety. Here he is identifying at the end of those three verses... Who God is, my salvation, my liberty, my deliverance, my safety. So there you have again in the psalm the identity of God to David and his heart. That's section one, just looking at some of those words and the depths of them. Here we go, that there's a longing for his presence from David. And that's what the psalm is about, saying who he is saying what he's done, and then declaring him and knowing him. It's very similar in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6. I read this one from the New International Version, don't know why. Isaiah 55 verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. There's this word again, this impression, this unction to seek him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Now here, the word seek uh, means to tread or to frequent. So should we seek him today and then not next week? Should we seek him today and then not tomorrow? Follow, it also means to follow, pursue, seek or ask. And then specifically, here's this word again, to worship. Seekers are worshippers of the Lord. I'm looking for you just to say who you are. I'm looking for you just to lavish my love and my praise upon you. Just because. (laughs) Hallelujah. And then there's a strange phrase here in Isaiah 55. This is six. Uh, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Again, while he may be present, just like his face. Look for him while he's present. While he's present, while he's present. Finally, again, or or a couple more, call. So it says, call on him while he's near. 
it's the same thing across the person that you've met. A little bit wider, though, um, that are bidden. It, it, it has this connotation, cry, come on, be, come on, call, come on, go forth, come on. Stretch yourself wide in that calling out to him. But again in Isaiah, the children of God are being encouraged to seek, to worship him while he's present and to call far and wide while he's near, while he's at hand, while he's present. So we have what some of those words mean and then we have the fact that there are other similarities. But the fact is David was seeking the presence of the Lord. So I asked myself, why, after the uplifting verse 6, is he crying out? He asks for grace. He asks God to answer. Do we trust him to always answer us? Because there's victory in this psalm. But in the three verses, they are a plea. It seems there's a struggle, either with self or with God, that David is suddenly going through. How many of us don't struggle with God at times and with ourself or our lives? Is there anxiety to be heard in this cry? What's behind it? What's David crying out for? What is he trying to get to? Some of the commentaries that I was looking at, one's called Enduring Word. It said, you have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me. David used God's past help as a reason to ask and to expect future help. David could testify, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yeah, um, my soul is struggling a little bit just in this moment and uh, uh, I'm feeling a little anxious, but... In the past, I know what he's done. So I know that he's the God of my salvation. I can identify him again ha, as the God of my salvation. I can expect his help in the future. F.B. Meyer commentary says, it is a supplication, it's an ask in the middle of triumph. So the triumphant note, he says, changes to sadness did the writer look from his redeemer to the winds and the waves so was there trouble afoot and his, he takes his eyes off the face of the Lord and looks at the troubles and the waves is that why the cry came because there was un, that unsurety what about Peter when Jesus was walking on the water and called him to come out and, and come to him. And Peter begins to walk on the water. Imagine, I'm walking on water. And then he takes his eyes off of the Lord and realizes I could sink and begins to think because he didn't continue to look at the face of the Lord, but began to be anxious, began to panic. David is experiencing that somehow in the psalm, just in the middle. Another commentary I thought was very powerful. It says, but sometimes God seems to hide his face only to draw us to a point of trust and abandonment which otherwise the soul had never dared to adopt. It comes back again and again so is he Lord of everything in our lives? Or is he just Lord of some things? Can we trust him with everything? Or can we only trust him with a little? He seems to hide his face, but surely it is to draw us to the point of trust and abandonment where we say, it's in your hands, I can't do anything about it. I have to trust you. Or could it be that God had invited David to seek him? Yet there was a sense in which David felt that God was hiding from him. But David didn't become angry with God or turn against him. He may have been disappointed, but he still sought God all the more and desperately. Do not leave me, 
do not forsake me. Either way, the command is seek his face, not his hands. When I look again at verse 9, which is a plea not to hide his face, what did this mean to those who were reading and understanding the Psalms in those days? Note that God uses imagery of his face to show his affection, but also his presence, his nearness to his people. His face is important. When I was first born again, there were all those prayers, do this for me, do that for me. Now my prayers are, let me just be with you. Just a touch. Just a touch in your presence. Changes everything for me. In their presence is direction, solutions, peace. Oh, but sorry, I always end up talking about his presence, don't I? Is it because I'm experiencing it more and more? Or is it because I have need of it? I don't know. Almost every time I'm ministering, it's about the presence of God. It's about his being with us more than any other person. We can't be the best that we could be if he's not present with us. When we draw close to him, he says he will draw close to us. And the closer we draw to him, the less of us can be seen then as we leave that presence, we're changed. We become his love. We become his grace, as it were. We begin to walk in the things that we ourselves have experienced and we begin to treat others the way that he would. As I said, solutions come. I was trying to help somebody recently but I didn't know how. But as I worshipped God and as I drew near, I could hear ask that question there. There are two issues there that need to be dealt with. I couldn't have known these things about that person if I hadn't been in the presence of God for him to reveal it to me, to help him. Some people are so full of the presence of God, even a stranger they meet, they can speak into their lives and know that God is at work. That often on the street, some of our evangelists would have experienced that. Brings, exp- brings salvation into the lives of people who are, how would you know that? I can't impress enough the, the power of just being in his presence. In the Bible as well, just a couple more bits from the commentaries, God's hiding or turning his face away from his people is often an act of judgment or discipline. So you can imagine the desperation in the days of uh, the Hebrews. Uh, uh, Don't, 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 don't. Uh, you, You mustn't leave me. Don't turn away from me. This means I'm in trouble with you. There is that as well. But I don't think that's what David was sensing. The idea is that God is pulling back so that people will realize they need his grace and power to seek him out. We need him. Often in the Psalms, they're crying out, how long will you hide your face from me? Don't hide from me. I need your presence. I need your presence. Last one, God is hiding sometimes to prevent us from finding him on our own terms. Instead, God invites all people to come out of their hiding places to seek him in the purpose of Jesus. So I could be looking for the Lord and somehow he's hiding from me because I'm coming with my plans, my control of my situation that I don't really want to give to him and he better answer on my terms. He's going to hide because he wants us submitted to him and his will fully. He wants us to trust him for every day of our lives and every situation 
in our lives.